I talked to Coach Chad made sure that he wanted to relay specifics on this one, and I, and I have them marked down in the head mm -hmm. on this. So um, I, I can share those. But, Nate, you see me either. I want to – this fires me up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we'll see. Maybe Chad will contradict everything <laughs> yeah. that I said. I, I will I've be got, Chad. I've got an idea too, so okay. let's, okay. See what, let's see what we all do. So there are different – we're talking about different things here. I remember when I did my first, like, bike fit in 20, 2006, I drove to San Francisco because I wanted a proper bike fit. I yeah. went to the best place I could find. And the guy like, did a bike fit. It was horrible. I couldn't, like, <laughs> I could literally see it stay on the saddle for like 10 seconds because it hurt so bad. Um, and then he put me on a computer trainer and he goes, the, be the computer trainer has a spin scan and it can measure how smooth your pedal stroke is. And he says, the best guys can do this where it says 100, meaning you have the same power output for the whole stroke. And he, he was like, that's the best ones. Um, that's not true. Uh, <laughs> that's not how you should ride. Yes. Uh, they've done true. lots of studies on this. It's that first quadrant, like the, the, the quad dominant downstroke is where you get most of the power. Yep. That is, you shouldn't try to ride in a full perfect circle. Perfectly smooth. It's, yeah. not, it's not efficient. Okay, so that's, that's one side. And that is the, I think that's what Marty, you probably hear is, you don't want to have the 100 spin scan. And that's why we don't, we don't do any type of spin scan and train a road because we don't want you to have a smooth one like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's another side to it where you're just like knocking around where you, uh, there's like an idea of a supple pedal stroke or when you have to actually turn, um, when you're pushing down, you don't want to keep pushing down. There's a time where you stop pushing down and start pulling back a little bit. Yep. You don't pull back at the same power as pushing down. Right. Then you still are, are de-weighting your feet a little bit. You're not pulling up the same way, but you're having this, uh, this, this higher efficiency of having a smooth, supple pedal stroke but still having a more power in that first quadrant by a ton totally ton. you see this by pro riders you just look at them and you look at someone who hasn't ridden a lot yeah you can see the difference right there yep and that is what we're going after now please contradict me no no, what no Chad said. it's like you channeled chad yeah. uh <laughs> that, that, that very thing i think that where people there there's uh, a smooth pedal stroke and then there's like uh, something that goes a little bit deeper into how the power is distributed throughout Sure, if you're smoother than just a person that's just jumped on a bike, you'll probably be a bit smoother in terms of how it's distributed. But as a cyclist, and especially like with the workout techs that we have, the main goal is to look at the time that you have while you're doing these workouts and to maximize the efficiency of that time. Mm -hmm. So rather than just sitting and spinning, we look at that as an opportunity to have you start to focus on things because here's something that absolutely everybody can agree on. If you've cycled for any por portion of time, you have at certain times gone, wow, my knee's knocking now. Or I've become really unstable as I pedal. Like yeah, I start sure. to bounce, like it, it happens. Like mm -hmm. we get bad habits and they, and so what that does is that gives you a time to focus in on those bad habits and then just try to re kind of recalibrate and smooth things out again. So then you're not knocking, you're not putting excessive stress on your joints. You're not shifting your sit bones constantly. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not placing your weight incorrectly on the bike. There's a lot of efficiency to be grabbed in that respect. But, yeah, don't try to put even power out around 360 degrees of the pedal stroke. That's silly. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think w there's the – these kind of pedaling technique things are different than, like, suplesse, right? Mm -hmm. And that's someone who has a pretty pedal, pretty pedal stroke. But I think it's the efficiency that matters, and it's, like, keeping everything engaged. And Chad's doing friendly reminders mm -hmm. that, that keep you in line and keep you – Con conscious of what you're pedaling and I think that's the important part and everybody has to do that all the time like your pedal stroke degrades mm -hmm. all the time so if you're not constantly shoring things up it's going to get worse right like especially yeah. as you get tired uh, my son who's five on Saturday <laughs> he's learning how to ride a bike and it, he will lose the pedals because he tries mm -hmm. to pedal so quickly and I swear some of you adults, if you weren't clipped in, you would, you would, do you the would lose the pedals. I would do that. I yep. can't. Every As once in a while, really ride quickly. on flats with your dress shoes and then see what you do. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's kind of a shocking, like how, yeah. how easy it is to slip off. Yeah. If you get like flats that are like really st sticky ones with like sticky shoes, then yeah, it's darn near like being clipped in. But uh, you know, a another thing you mentioned suplex and that beautiful pedaling format. I think of like Tom Bonin, like mm -hmm. when he pedals, th there was nothing wrong with that ever. Like it just looked so smooth, right? His heels weren't excessively dropped. His toes weren't excessively pointed. But that stuff is very much like uh, that. That's a lot of that is personal preference. Like mm -hmm. Nate, you ride more more heels up than I do. 
heels up toes down than I do, but it isn't incorrect. Um, it's, it's, if, if it's excessive, maybe where you're like dragging, you know, your, your, maybe your heels all the way down to the ground and it's dropped really low, or maybe it's like pointed so much that you're getting calf cramps. That's obviously problematic. Right. And the last point of suplex is like, everybody's different. Mm -hmm. So Nate has a pretty pedal stroke and you have a pretty pedal stroke, but they're not the same. Totally. Right. And they work for both of you. Can you define that as people have never heard it before? Suplex. Yeah. Um, what it, I think what it means is it, you can tell that there's a strong, efficient pedal stroke that looks like you're getting the most out of the pedaling around um, your pedal stroke. So the it's, idea. I think of it as a beautiful pedal it's, stroke. It's a beautiful pedal stroke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and that's one has to do with practice and having a correct bike fit and pedaling hard. When someone's pedaling hard, it looks prettier. And when someone's pedaling efficiently, it looks prettier. So as long as you're keeping those in mind and like I always think of pistons right like your mm -hmm. legs should be pistons like everything should be lined up everything should be pe pedaling down and everything should be engaged and like one of Chad's ones that I always do is pull my belly button into the back of my spine yeah and I can tell as soon as I do that it tightens every it removes all the slack from my system and then all of a sudden I'm pedaling correctly yeah so that's my cue that I use for myself because that's what's lacking is if I don't have that part there's slack in my system. I, like I noticed one for me and everybody will have different Everyone ones. will have different ones. Um, one of the things that I have is that I find that I actually will start to ride with my pelvis shifted to one side uh, when I'm riding just slightly um, if I'm like pushing really hard. And I think it's because I carry a lot of tension through the quadriceps and through the hamstrings and glutes at the same time. And I start to pull more on one side because I'm not balanced. None of us are perfectly mm -hmm. balanced. And I start to do that. So one of the things that I've been thinking of that really helps is I think of like my kneecap basically just going forward and coming back and going forward and coming back. Like rather than thinking of even my kneecap going up and down, it doesn't mean that I'm physically moving, moving it back and forth. What it does is it helps me engage the muscles, I feel like, in a more, mm -hmm. I guess, shared manner that isn't overlapping as much, and then everything seems to smooth out. And that'll change. In a month, mm -hmm. I bet it'll be something different. Exactly. Um, but that's kind of how it works. Uh, the Velominati, the, as everybody <laughs> knows, they say Suples is the perfect for perfect storm of looking pro, harmony between grace and power, casual and deliberate. So, mm. uh, yeah, that's – and you can see that in certain – like uh, I think another guy, Brad Wiggins, had like an incredible yeah. pedal stroke, right? Yeah. He always looks so calm. The last thing I want to say about this is it's, um, it's neuromuscular – learning that you're doing here and mm -hmm. that's also what we do we we uh pedal at different cadences we do spin-ups on some of them uh spin-ups are the best case where you think like you're a good peddler then you try yeah. to do like do it 120 <laughs> or 130. <laughs> yeah exactly right <laughs> and really it's yeah. the same shape but how quickly can you does is your body good at um has it really been trained to do that shape at a high speed yeah and yeah. though you see track cyclists yeah. They practice this a ton, and they can do it really well. Yeah. And it doesn't necessarily mean like you're. It's going to add 20 watts to your FTP or anything like mm -hmm. that. Um, but it, it also can I think prevent injury, and uh, just help you be a better bike rider. And if you do get in those situations where you need to go fast or you need to go slow, uh, you can. Uh, or if you're cramping, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you ever been in that situation where you're yeah, cramping? Totally. You're like, now I am only pulling up. <laughs> yep, I'm I've got to change yeah. my pedaling technique now. Yep. yep. <laughs> Um, it's, it's just a good skill to have. And it, totally. the last part is it helps uh, pass the time, mm -hmm. yeah. which is also fun. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely does. And I, I think that for people that ride cyclocross or mountain biking or even gravel, um, but you have to be comfortable at pedaling. Y your, your pedal stroke needs to operate in somewhat in isolation of variables because you have so many variables that are constantly changing. So you really have to have that thing down solid. So then when you have all of these things that are forcing you to pedal way too fast or way too slow or pedal not anchored on your saddle because you're going over mm -hmm. really bumpy stuff, you have to have it sorted. Product idea. Yeah. I want a smart trainer that you can put in, quote, mountain bike mode Ooh. where it just re uh, slips all yeah, the time. Slips. <laughs> yeah, slips. Slips a little bit. Because when, yeah. uh, when you're a roadie and you go to mountain bike and yeah. you start, first start to slip, as soon as you slip once, you're like, I'm Ooh, done. Yeah. Like, you want to clip. It's over. Because that's what we're used to on road. As soon as you lose traction, you're about it's to over, die. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Shane, who we took on his first – or. Yeah, one Shane, of our engineers. Yeah. Shane, one of, our, one of the designers, the designers and, and uh, he came on a ride and he was on flats and he hadn't ridden mountain bikes, especially in the mountains since mm -hmm. he lives in Florida. He started <laughs> slipping and he was like, how can you possibly deal with that? Yeah, yeah, and I go, yeah. well, you just don't pedal as hard. <laughs> yeah. And so the thought that there is a 
you you can pedal not as hard as you have to. Yeah, it was. That's another kaboom. case where uh, having a pedal stroke or a, being able to pedal at different quadrants would be yeah. beneficial. When totally. You're, uh, low traction uh, sand. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Uh, you you have to go sometimes too. You get stuck in. You get stuck in the wrong gear, yeah. and you suddenly have to go really slowly, and you have to pull up and do a 360 pedal stroke. Mm -hmm. And it does totally. have to be the 100 spin scan. Mm -hmm. I want to cover a misnomer here. So, okay. like, Cadell Evans came from mountain biking, came into road, right? Um, and, and it's been – and it's Jean-Christophe Perrault and, like, a number of different athletes have done that, right? So when they come over – and you hear Phil and Paul talk about he's bouncing like a mountain biker. Like they always say that because Cadell had a super bobby upper body, right? Mm -hmm. That's just how it works. If you look, mountain bikers are very good at separating their upper and lower body, right? Yeah. They're, and a lot of the time, the reason they're bobbing like that, it's not like intentional, but it's a habit that they build and it, it can be excessive for sure. But it's a habit that they build because what they're doing is they're applying more pressure into that rear tire to then the, and it's timed so that that's where the peak torque is so then they can have better traction oh, I yeah. knew that so yeah. it's not like intentional but that's what develops when you're working on those steep slopes like exactly that. so if you if you i bet you do it naturally where if you're mm -hmm. climbing something super steep when you get to the right part of the pedal stroke you'll lean forward yep to no you well yeah yeah, yeah. so lean and then and then part. lean forward and then lean back and lean forward and, and it's and more, more like a pressure of like yeah kind of like down and down up yeah like into your hub yes. rather than up exactly it's, it's not like forward. you're going up and down yeah. it's not like you're going f back and forward it's like this diagonal plane that basically you're applying pressure so that it, more of it goes into the tire that seems so hard so, to do to think about it like it i don't think i could like think about it. yeah <laughs> exactly but, <laughs> but it's I, natural yeah, i bet your body can do it naturally yep and and i think that that's something that uh you see with like top you know top riders they can still be really smooth uh like jeff kabush is a really smooth pedaler for example but he still does this and th that's because they're they're strategically doing that. So road riders, quit making fun of mountain bikers for bouncing. They're just much more dynamic than you. So, <laughs> not not really. But yeah, it's it's a it's a technique. Uh, it absolutely is. It's not just you know circumstantial.